On today's episode of the Cryptoverse. Reason 126,551, why we need cryptocurrencies. Visa and MasterCard have just lost a lawsuit, landing them with a settlement bill of over $6 billion. Now this story was uh, featured on Bitcoin.com, here's the headline. Credit card cartels landed with a $6.2 billion price fixing bill. So MasterCard have only due to pay $108 million but Visa are paying like over $4 billion. Now, oddly, part of that settlement will be paid in shares of JP Morgan Chase, Citibank, and Bank of America. That seems strange to me. It makes little sense to me personally, but I am assuming that that's how they're going to make up the difference, because if you add up $4.1 billion and then $108 million, it falls short of $6.2 billion. So I assume that gap is being made up with shares of these companies, which is a little bit strange to me. Now, Bitcoin.com does point out that the total settlement figure of $6.2 billion is greater than the total market cap of EOS and Bitcoin Cash, which is pretty interesting. But it's small compared to Visa's annual revenue of $18 billion. Now, that's not a total true reflection because the, the fine, that $6.2 billion, it's going to come out of their profits, isn't it? But the $18 billion revenue, that's just pure sales. So that doesn't always translate to 18 billion sales to 18 billion profits. So I would still say that a for Visa, a $4 billion fine, if you, essentially, that's going to hit on the profits, right? Now, much like what Microsoft got pinched for back in their heyday, this was an antitrust case where Visa and MasterCard got accused of abusing their monopoly position and then inflating fees that they were charging to their merchant customers for processing card payments from the merchant's customers, right? And according to Bitcoin.com, the abuse had been running back as far as 2005. Now, that's the big problem that I see with these kinds of offences that financial institutions commit. Once the offence is committed, there's this huge time delay before it's even caught, number one, and tried and then punished. It's even longer. And by that time, the specific people involved have usually moved on. They work for other companies and it's their former employer, the company itself, that gets done for it, right? So the individual perpetrators, they never seem to face the consequences of their actions when they committed them under the employee of the company, just like the 2008 financial crisis, right? So that's what creates a culture of um, misbehavior in the world of financial services, right? Now, in a world of cryptocurrencies and crypto assets, that would not be a problem, right? And if you're often wondering which cryptos and which crypto assets will be the most robust now and in the future, well, I'd suggest you check out today's sponsor, which is Weiss Cryptocurrency Ratings. Because this is a service that I've been signed up to for almost a year now. And every Thursday, I get a PDF file that has over 100 cryptocurrencies listed in it with ratings listed from A to E. And that's based on factors like risk, reward, technology, and adoption for each individual coin, and it moves every week. So by including that kind of information in my portfolio adjustment decisions, especially during this bear market, it saved me a lot of stress. So head over to thecryptoverse.show, click on sponsors to learn more. And if you hate ads, and if you hate sponsor spots like that, well, you can now remove them by signing up as a Patreon on our Patreon page, linked in the video description and on the website as well. So now let's take a look at this controversy surrounding Coinbase and the New York Attorney General's report. Now, I'm going to grossly simplify this, otherwise the video is going to be an hour long. But this story was initially featured on Zero Hedge. That's where I found it. They published this expose, which carries the headline, Coinbase trading against customers, 20% volume from internal flow. There's the article. And it starts off exposed in capital letters. Now, the accusation stemmed from this report that the Attorney General of New York uh, published that said Coinbase themselves had disclosed that almost 20% of the executed volume on its platform was attributable to Coinbase's own trading, meaning the company itself was trading against its customers and taking you know, the other side of various trades. So Zero Hedge says that in the Forex market, the brokers generally see it as a safe bet to bet against retail investors because whatever retail investors are doing, generally that's wrong because <laughs> retail investors generally 
you know, lose money in the market. So that's a good, good barometer, right? The Forex brokers just simply bet against the retail investors and they usually make money. So this, this is saying that Coinbase is um, starting to exhibit this kind of behavior, which, which is bad. And uh, Zero Hedge points out that the, the, the ex-Forex investors, of ex-Forex traders that start to see this kind of behavior in crypto, it's going to, you know, it's going to remind them of that bad taste left by the Forex broker market. But then, so I was going to report on that story alone, but then fortunately today, Coinbase comes out with this article on their own blog almost in response. So this is written by Mike Lemprez, who is the chief policy officer at Coinbase. So he states here in the gray bit, it says, quote, unfortunately, some media coverage inaccurately characterized the report's findings. And now I think that's in reference to Zero Hedge, because Zero Hedge has a big readership. Uh, it generally gets, you know, repurposed. So whatever appears on Zero Hedge generally becomes the source for other media outlets to base articles on. But then Mike goes on here. He says, quote, Coinbase does not trade for the benefit of the company on a proprietary basis. In order to provide an easy to use customer experience, Coinbase consumer quotes a price and then quickly fills the order from our exchange platform, Coinbase Markets. This takes advantage of the liquidity provided by the entire Coinbase ecosystem. Now I'm glad that he said that because this is exactly how I understood the Coinbase ecosystem to work. And that's now being confirmed from this guy, Mike. Now, when the average retail customer signs up for a Coinbase account and then buys some Bitcoin, like with a credit card or with some fiat currency that they've transferred via a bank deposit, where do you think that the Bitcoin comes from that they buy? And then when they sell it on the regular Coinbase platform, where does that Bitcoin go, right? It's not, it's not Coinbase themselves that's buying and selling that Bitcoin, right? Also, where does the price quote come from? Well, it comes from Coinbase Pro, which is Coinbase's actual trading platform, their exchange platform. So from the point of view of the trader who's on Coinbase Pro, when they see an order for a buy or a sell, when it's executed, that could just be from another trader sat on Coinbase Pro you know, trading for a living, or in 20% of the cases, that order is coming from a Coinbase retail customer who is using the regular Coinbase consumer interface, right? So it might look like Coinbase is trading against its own customers on Coinbase Pro, but in reality, they're saying that it's the Coinbase consumer system that goes to Coinbase Pro and then buys or sells the Bitcoin on behalf of a retail customer. So that's cleared that up. now. On a higher level, this is incredibly frustrating for me, so I can imagine how this guy Mike feels about it. This type of thing worries me with regards to regulators. It's a sign to me that they still may be attempting to write regulations for something they just have a gross misunderstanding of. And I don't mind regulation, but I'm what I'm for is regulation that is based on an accurate reflection of what crypto is and how it works. If there's a false perception, then the regulation is gonna be a mismatch no matter how well it's written, right? Now, I know many people are not fond of Coinbase, but I'm on their side in this case, especially since Coinbase as a company have done more for the cryptocurrency space than almost any organization that I can think of. So like I always say, credit where credit is due. But that's all I've got for you today. So if you like this episode, go ahead, hit that like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And if you would like access to my very best material, such as my structured online courses, check out my website, cryptoversity.com. Click on courses and you can take any one of these online courses that I've created for your educational delight. If you want to follow me on the social networks, go to the podcast page where all the social networks are listed on there. Other than that, I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying, bye for now.